Thank you, praise and worship band. And uh, again, Brother Bong for leading us in the presence of God through the singing and uh, heartfelt prayer. Today we'll talk, we're going to talk about an interesting person by the name of uh, Elijah. We have um, known him maybe since uh, childhood days, but it's always good to go back to his life and stories and get refreshed how God molded him to the kind of leader he was and how he carried on with his responsibilities as, uh, as a prophet. <clears throat> Elijah, God who speaks, 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, verses 1 to 9. God who speaks, meaning God who communicates. Uh, alam natin, God can communicate through different means, through audible voice, through his words, and sometimes he communicates in his silence. Uh, that happened uh, on Elijah, on this, on this particular uh, passage, but Behind the scene, God was working in the silence. <clears throat> we are in our October series where, uh, with a general topic of where is God when it hurts. It basically deals with uh, mental health issues. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about Elijah's depression. Uh, when I was reading the passage, on 1 Kings, the Bible made no mention about depression. Walang word na depression, but uh, Elijah had it. Elijah had it, and the symptoms were present when he was uh, carrying out his responsibility as the prophet of God. I'm blessed to see Gospel Church of Manila lovingly ministering to the congregation with relevant and real-life issues like depression. Depression is a real concern. It's a real concern. It is prevalent more than ever, especially during the onslaught of COVID-19. And some of those people who had it could still be in the same situation. They were not yet able to bounce back. According to WHO, referring to the Philippines, our beloved country, from January 3, 2020, that was the onset of COVID-19, to October 7, 2022, that was just last Friday, uh, there have been 3,961,349 confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection with uh, a sad figure of 63,149 deaths. <clears throat> that is officially from WHO referring to our <clears throat> country. And during the pandemic, the cases of depression is skyrocketed to colossal level. And most of them, as I mentioned a while ago, remained in the same situation. Philippines pa lang yun. We're not talking about the global scenario. Depression uh, was a global crisis then and now. <clears throat> now, what does the Bible say when a person is in deep depression? Let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we would like to thank you for speaking to us afresh. Uh, early this morning and now uh, in this uh, particular worship service. We would like to invite you and welcome you in our midst, being, our, uh, being the greatest speaker in this room. We would like to listen to you. We would like to learn from you. And we would like to ask for your help to do and obey whatever instructions you have 
uh, in store for each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray, <clears throat> amen and amen. Uh, as uh, mentioned a while ago, <clears throat> uh, first kings that covered the life of Elijah didn't mention the word depression, but he was into it. He was in, a, in that kind of uh, situation. Now, the, problem, uh, the question is, what caused his depression? Bakit siya nagkaroon ng depression? In 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 2, it reads, Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he killed all the prophets with the sword. Uh, this is referring to Elijah who had killed all the prophets of Baal with sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. Nakakatakot itong sinabi niya. May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely. If by this time, tomorrow, I do not make your life like that one of them. And this was the reason of Elijah's depression. Why was he so depressed? that he lost all his will to live. Kung babasahin natin, no? balikan natin yung statement, verses 1 to 2, his life was seriously under threat from King Ahab and Jezebel. Now, who wouldn't feel that way if your life is in clear and present danger? Kung ang isang tao nakatanggap ng ganong ano ba tawag ng threat, sino ang hindi maapektuhan? Now, before you, we proceed to, to our uh, message this morning, I would like us to know I, and identify the character of Ahab. Sino ba si King Ahab? No? Let us identify these people. King Ahab, according to Maliliit ba? Yeah, I think it's readable. First Kings chapter 16, verses 29 to 33. In the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, son of Omri, became king of Israel. And he reigned in Samaria over Israel 22 years. During this particular history, hati pang Israel. Merong Israel, merong pang Judah. No? So Ahab, son of Omri, listen to this. Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. So ganon siya kasama. No? Walang kapantay ang kasamaan niya dahil wala siyang katulad, katangi-tangi. Pero ang pinag-uusapan, katangi-tangi ang kanyang kasamaan. No? no king before him did what he did as a king. No? He not only considered it trivial to commit the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, but he also married <coughs> Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of <coughs> Sidonians, and began to serve Baal and worship him. He set up an altar of Baal in the temple of Baal that he built in Samaria. Ahab also made an Asherah pole and did more to arouse the anger of the Lord. So there was an intentional uh, effort on his part to make God angry. The God of Israel then did all the kings of Israel before him. So wala talaga siyang katulad. No? He was there, he was bent to arouse the anger of the Lord. Sa Tagalog, nananadya. Sinadya niyang galitin ang Diyos. <laughs> Walang takot. Ano? Ahab became king of Israel 
in the 38th year of King Asa of Judah. So, contemporary si King Ahab of Israel and King Asa of Judah. Nagpang-abot sila. They were contemporaries, but there was a huge, huge difference between the two kings. King Asa was greatly honored as a righteous king. Totally opposite of King Ahab's character. He was greatly honored as a righteous king. That was the background of Ahab. Talking about Jezebel. Queen Jezebel was the daughter of Ethbaal. Si Ethbaal po was a king at the same time priest of Sidon. And Jezebel, ito yung nakakalungkot, promoted the worship of false god in Israel. So false god, for, false worship of God flor, flor, li, proliferated in the whole country of Israel. Siya po yung pasibuno. Hindi lang yan, she harassed and killed God's prophets and arranged for an innocent man to be falsely charged and executed. These were the powerful people. Powerful people behind the threat. And because this Jezebel, his father, was a king priest, meron siyang religious, deep religious background on worshiping false gods. And she was really determined to kill God's prophets. During this time, she was on a killing spree that left Elijah, a lone survivor, survivor during his time. In 1 Kings 18.22, Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. So this would attest on the claims of Elijah that he's the lone survivor. He was the only righteous prophet prophet who was there seriously teaching, rebuking evil on God's people. One is to four, 50 prophets. It, it's, it was a very big odd. But again, on the latter part of the story, we're going to see the greatness and the power of God. See, Elijah naman. No? We are familiar about Elijah. What do we know about Elijah? Try to recall yung mga Sunday school lessons natin. No? Naalala ko, uh, during DVBS, in my childhood days, I remembered Elijah, I remembered him as the person who was fed by the raven. Alam na alam natin yung story. Every time we hear Elijah, he comes the bird, the raven. It was a pleasant and a memorable story. This is how it happened. First Kings 17, 5, 6. So he did what the Lord had told him. He was such an obedient prophet. So he did what the Lord had told him. Had told him he went to Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Masarap ano? Bread and meat. Carbohydrates and protein in the morning, in the afternoon, carbohydrates and protein uli. And in the evening, he drank from the brook. <coughs> Kanina, iniisip ko, ano kaya tong meat na ito? Pork chop ba ito o fried chicken? Hindi <coughs> natin alam, no? Ang alam natin, it was clearly differ- differentiated Bread and meat, carbohydrates, and protein. And Jezebel, the evil woman, 
was bent to kill Elijah. This was the cause of his depression. Now, makikita na natin the human traits of God's prophet. It is now getting into his nerves. It was affecting him. And later, we can see how, how it affected his objectivity and decision-making. Uh, nagkaroon ako ng interest <coughs> to look for a Tagalog translation sa uh, verses 1 and 2. Pumunta ako sa magandang balita, Biblia. Uh, verse 1, ang sabi, Sinabi ni Haring Ahab sa kanyang asawang si Jezebel ang lahat ng ginawa ni Elias. At kung papaano pinatay ni Elias referring to Elijah, ang lahat ng mga propeta ni Baal. Kaya't nagpadala si Jezebel na isang sugo upang sabihin kay Elias, patayin sana ako ng mga Diyos. Kung hindi ko gagawin sa iyo sa ganitong, ganito rin oras ang ginawa mo sa mga propeta na kulagot si Elijah. Magtago ka na. Kanina, uh, I also asked the congregation, uh, there was a turn in the first part uh, that talk about the term is slaughtered. Sa NIV kasi, yung pinatay, they use the word, the book used the word is slaughtered. Nung tinanong ko sa Tagalog congregation, <laughs> Ano ba ibig sabihin na slaughtered? Pastor, kinatay. <coughs> Sabi ko, di ba malo pag kinatay sa hayop lang yon. <coughs> kinatay nila Elijah ang mga propeta ni Baal. Kaya siguro nagalit si Jezebel sa si King Ahab. No? So, slaughter is a rough uh, word to describe Uh, how a person got killed. No? It's not a conventional way of killing an enemy. But nevertheless, that's what the Bible, that's how the Bible translated it. Ulitin ko, patayin sana ako ng mga Diyos kung hindi ko gagawin sa iyo. Sa ganito ring oras ang ginawa mo sa mga profeta. Obviously, there's a revenge here. No? Pay off for Elijah. How did this happen? No? Verse 1 mentioned about Elijah killing Baal's prophet. Elijah killing Baal's prophet through sword. How did this happen? So let's, uh, anyway, it's on the screen. If you can flip back to 1 Kings 18, 38 to 40. Uh, this was when, remember when Elijah challenged King Ahab and his prophets to offer bulls, to offer bull, and he would also offer a bull, make a bull offering. And Elijah ordered the people to pour water on the offering. In a normal thinking, how can you burn? How can an object get burned with water? We know water will surely quench the fire. And then, uh, the prophets of Baal, according to the figure, it was 450. They were... Singing, they were dancing, they were doing all sorts of ritual, morning, afternoon, till evening, and nothing happened. Ito naman si Elijah, he taunted them. Baka siguro kaya nagalit sa kanya. He said, okay, maybe your God is in trance. Maybe your, your, your God is troubling. Maybe your God... is passed asleep, you wake him up. Come on, do it louder so your gods can hear you. But nothing really happened because <laughs> yung God nila is powerless. And then it was, when it was Elijah's time, lo and behold, they poured so much water that it filled the trench. And according to the Bible, even the trench dried up because of the fire. 
And then in verse 38, 1 Kings 18, 38, Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also leaked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. So they now recognize who is the living God. It was Elijah's God who answers prayer. Ito na hinahanap kong word kanina. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered, slaughtered there. Ulitin ko sa Tagalog, kinatay daw. No? Now, prior to this event, in the same chapter, there was a sharp altercation between Elijah and King Ahab. Elijah rebuked the king to his face. Ang tapang. Ano? Ganun talaga, mga prophets. If you are wrong, according to the Bible, you are wrong. And Elijah had the courage of God to rebuke him to his face. Etong sina, ito yung nangyari. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel. Elijah replied, <laughs> Ito talaga matapang. But you and your father's family have, you have abandoned the Lord's command and you followed the Baals. Buti na sana kung si Ahab lang, ano? Binanggit pa ni Elijah yung family. So, it's a different story when you include the family. But that's the truth. The king and the whole family led Israel to worship Baal and followed this, this uh, false god. All the more he got the ire of King Ahab and Isabel. Because of doing God's will, because of his dedication to his work as a prophet, this was what he got. He is being hunted. The lone survivor is now being hunted. Jezebel was determined to wipe out the prophets of God. And Elijah was the one surviving. <clears throat> ano bang effect na depression? The effect of depression. <clears throat> First Kings 19.3-5 Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. And he said, I have had enough, Lord. He said, Take my life. I am no better than any ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush, and he fell asleep. Because of the threat, Elijah was terribly, terribly afraid. Prophet siya, pero sabi sa verse 3, he was afraid. He was so afraid because he ran away. He ran for his life. Now, when a person is afraid, the first thing that he would do is to secure himself, di ba? 
That's the first response. When a person is afraid, the first thing that he would do is to secure himself. Uh, we can do that in many ways with different options. We secured ourselves in many ways, but Elijah, his option was to run away. Because by running away, that would make him feel safer. But he ran and ran aimlessly until he reached Beersheba in Judah. And because of fear, he found it wise to be alone, which, was not, which is not a wise decision when he left his servant. Because in that particular crisis, he needs companion all the more to keep him company. Makikita natin that when a person is overwhelmed by a threat, you lose all your objectivity. You lose your sense of time. You lose your sense of direction. And you are gravitated towards making successive erroneous decision. Tulad ng nangyari kay Elijah. Hindi lang yun. You pity and look down on yourself. This is the worst. The worst of it all is that you become suicidal. Naalala niyo sa prayer niya, he prayed that he might die. In verse 4, I get so interested with this. In verse 4, there, there's one word or action that really caught my attention. Behind all the chaos and the hugeness of the crisis, Elijah did one thing that overshadowed the situation. Alam niyo ba kung ano yung ginawa niya? Can you guess? So meaning when he did that, he was not totally out of his senses. Sige na, hulaan nyo. Baka tama kayo. <clears throat> I'll read the verse 4 again. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. And he said, I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. Ano yung interesting thing na ginawa ni Elijah? He prayed. He sat down and prayed. This is an intentional act of Elijah in the midst of crisis. Naupo siya talaga to organize himself then he went to God in prayer. But it was a weird kind of prayer. Kasi sabi niya, take my life. He wanted to die. He prayed that he might die. Naalala niya si Job. Si Job prayed in similar kind of prayer when he was in desperate situation. But the Lord interpreted it differently. When a person makes that kind of prayer, he knew that person is in deep trouble. And God, again, in his loving way, interpreted it differently. Elijah was praying, actually praying for help and relief. Ang galing ng Panginoon, na na? He was silent, but he was communicating through his silence. Pwede pala yun, ano? Sanay tayo to communicate through audible voices, through writings, 
through eye to eye contacts, through, through body language, but on this particular moment, God was communicating through his silence. And he knew, he knew Elijah was in deep trouble for carrying out his responsibility as a prophet. That put him into trouble that would cause his life. Pero alam naman natin no? what happened. The, invo- ito, the involvement of God in depression. <clears throat> the last point. The involvement of God in depression. We have learned from the preceding verses that Elijah was physically, emotionally, and mentally tired. And that is why the Lord caused him to fall asleep. The Bible said he fell asleep. But it was the Lord who caused him to fall asleep for a much needed rest. Mahikita natin, no? Silence, but God was in control. Amazing. No? We, don't, we don't hear His voice. We don't see His footprints. But, he, but He's with us. And always and perpetually with us. Now, in times like, like this, sometimes God is nowhere to be found. No? Tulad na sinabi ko kanina, you don't hear His voice, you don't see His footprints. But He was, he was silent, but He was acting behind the scene. He was involved in the plight of Elijah. When I was meditating on on this story, I was reminded of uh, the theological lessons I had in the seminary. Uh, it's it's about deism, and uh, since my f- my favorite author for systematic theology is Wayne Grudem, I like him over Millard Erickson. No? Kapag binabasa ko ito, mas naiintindihan ko, Pastor Greg, eh, kaysa kay Millard Erickson. And I would like to quote his definition on deism. I've been using this for 25 years. 25 years na. And I always refer to this, to this book. Deism. According to Wayne Grudem, deism is the view that God is not Now, directly involved in the creation, God is viewed as a divine clockmaker who wound up the clock of creation at the beginning, but then he left it to run on its own. Wayne Grudem, Systematic Theology, page 270. Parang, when he created the world, when it was fully functioning, he distanced himself at tumitingin na lang siya sa kanyang creation. Wala na siyang involvement. And we sharply dispute that wrong theology. God is always there. God is always with us. God is not distant. God is not passive. He is personal. He deals with that with us specifically according to his plan and according to our being. Ganon siya ka personal sa bawat isa sa atin. While uh, <clears throat> pleading this book. Actually, this is one of my favorite books. I chanced upon a uh, this a bookmarker, uh, a bookmarker 
that, that was given to me a year after I visited Gospel Church of Manila. I came to Gospel Church of Manila February 2, 1987. <clears throat> and then a person handed this to me on February 8, 1988. Uh, sinabi, asan si Iris? Sabi ni Iris, kasing edad daw ni Jun Tapao itong itong bookmarker ko eh. He was, he, he was born in uh, June 1987 ka, di ba? Matanda ka na. So, allow me to read the message. <clears throat> Nelson, happy first spiritual birthday. A man that hath a friend, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh Closer than a brother. Proverbs 18, 24. <sighs> Signed Ming. Ming Ming. <clears throat> uh, when I was uh, trying to look at this, so because of prayer, I am now, I am eternally grateful to Ming, eternal na, because he was the one who brought me to Gospel Church of Manila in February 2, 1987. I ignored him several times, but he was persistent, and I finally came. And I'm seeing him. All of us, hindi lang pala ako. <laughs> We're seeing him in, in the near future, Ming Ming. So I am now 35 years old as a Christian. And in my 35 years as a Christian, I would strongly attest that God is not distant. God is not passive. He deals with us is specific to his plan and is specific to our being. He is a very personal God. God was, when Elijah was pouring out his heart telling God he wanted to die. God was listening to the lament of Elijah. He was listening intently in silence. He brought him to sleep to rejuvenate his spirit, soul, and body. And now on this particular point, he was nourishing Elijah by providing him warm, warm meals. First Kings 19, 5 to 6. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. The Lord brought him to sleep. All at once, the angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there, there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. It was a nice, warm, and delightful meal. Warm bread and water. But instead of waking up, sabi sa Bible, he laid down again. So there is, this is nothing but a sign of depression. He fell asleep, he got his fill, and then he went down again. In verse 7, the angel of the Lord came back, persistent, the second time, and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by that food, 
he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. So makikita natin, makikita natin that God attended to Elijah's needs. He covered all the needs for him to be able to travel for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is very personal. Specific to God's plan, specific to Elijah's being. Hindi mass production. <clears throat> Kanina, when, uh, when, when, alam ni bong ito, when I had, after having my breakfast, I took my maintenance. <clears throat> Five pills <yun. laughs> Early in the morning. As I was looking at the packaging, they all, they all look the same. No? Yung astorbastatin, no? yung Clopi, baka alam nyo ito, Clopi de, Clopi de Grel. They, they all look the same because they were mass produced. No? Mass produced but specific to the medical needs of, uh, of the patient. Sa Panginoon, hindi. It's not mass production but it's specific and personal. Because our cases are different. Probably some of us here are in the same kind of depression. God knew it beforehand. Probably there are five people, I hope not, who are having depressions. But God will deal with them differently because that was such the character of God, a very personal God. And it's so, it's so comforting to know when a person deals with a needy person in a personal manner, meaning that person cares for that needy person that much. He plans he includes that person in his valuable time and other parts of his life. In closing, it relieves me to see that God's people, God's leaders in the Old Testament, they were vulnerable to human weaknesses and limitations. We feel empathized as we study their lives, and God did not choose super leaders. Yung ba mga super leaders na matitibay who are totally resilient to all kinds of challenges. <clears throat> Moses was a great leader. But he cried out to the Lord because he was leading a nation out of a nation. Two million na matitigas ang ulo. <clears throat> he was vulnerable. He cried out, to, cried out to the Lord. And now Elijah. And in the New Testament, Apostle Paul. <clears throat> I always refer to him as a strong man. But there was one passage in the First Corinthians where he shared about the perils of his life. Uncertainties in the middle of the sea, hunger, walang clothing, threats of the bandits. He was not bragging about these things, but he was sharing this to, sh to, to share what he was undergoing. Now, when we share our heart, when it comes to God's hearing, it becomes prayer. It's always that way. 
kanina nga when when I was uh, focusing on the prayer of Elijah, so because this was a weird, weird prayer. I don't remember praying that kind of prayer. Praying to God, asking Him na mamatay na ako. May, meron ba ditong gumawa niyan? No? One lesson, even if we utter weird prayers, God would always interpret it in a very beautiful way. Tulad ng ginawa kay Elijah. God interpreted it differently. Sabi niya, ah, he prayed this kind of prayer. He needs help. He needs relief. What a loving and personal God. Elijah did not regret it when he faithfully followed God's command. He just responded as a human being, realizing that he was not the only one in the campaign uh, for righteousness in Israel. He was the only one in the campaign for righteousness in Israel. And seemingly, King Ahab and Jezebel were getting the upper hand. He was vulnerable, he was helpless, but the Lord attended to him. Meaning, kung ano man ang kalagayan natin ngayon, hindi alam ni Pastor Greg what I have, I don't know what he has, and for the rest of you. But the Lord knows everything. He will respond specific to his plan and is specific to your being. Tayo po manalangin. What a comfort to hear from you this morning, O Lord. Teaching us in the struggle of Elijah. who underwent this kind of depression because of serious threat. Thank you because you allowed us to see his vulnerability and you allowed us to identify ourselves with him. And we all together look up to you in this kind of situation. Thank you because At times when we feel you're nowhere to to be found, we don't hear your voice, we don't see your footprints, but you're always there. And we just learned, all of us this morning learned that you are capable of communicating in your silence. And that is very comforting to each one of us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord.